So now that we've worked through an example together, I would like you guys to pause the video and try an example by yourself. So what is the empirical formula of a compound that contains 60% carbon, 4.48% hydrogen, and 35.53% oxygen by mass? All right, well, if you were working through this problem and you got to the end and found something a little strange, then let's address that. And if you didn't find something strange and you're like, oh no, I didn't find something strange, that's okay too. Maybe you did find what I'm referring to. You just didn't think it was strange. So let's work through this problem together and then address any strangenesses that might have occurred along the way. All right, so we're starting with 60.00% carbon, 4.48% hydrogen, and 35.53% oxygen all by mass. So just like before, our first step is going to be that we are going to assume 100 grams of our starting material. And this is going to allow us to drop the unit of the percent and insert the unit of the gram. So we're actually working with 60.00 grams of carbon, 4.48 grams of hydrogen, and 35.53 grams oxygen. All right, so that's rule number one, or step number one, is what I should say, right? Get out of the percent and into the gram. Now, the next step in our flowchart is to get out of the gram and into the mole. So we're going to use the molar masses present on the periodic table to get out of the unit of the gram and into the unit of the mole. Carbon's mass on the periodic table is 12.01 grams for every mole. Hydrogen's is 1.008 grams per every one mole. And oxygen's is 16.00 grams per every one single mole. All right, whipping out the calculators, crunch, crunch. What we find on the other side is that we are working with 4.996 moles of carbon we are working with 4.44 moles of hydrogen, and we are working with 2.221 moles of oxygen. Now, just like before, our next step, now that we have the moles present, is to take each of these molar values and drop them into the subscript of some type of chemical formula. So we have 4.996 carbons, we have 4.44 hydrogens, and we have 2.221 oxygens. So far, so good. The strangeness is going to become more apparent as we reduce our subscripts, or at least attempt to. We're gonna take the least or the lesser value of everything present, this 2.221, and divide all of the subscripts by this across the board. Right, this is how we properly reduce our subscripts to the smallest whole numbered ratio, except carbon doesn't really give us a nice whole numbered ratio. If we crunch this number, 4.996, and divide it by 2.221, what we end up with is 2.25. And this may seem like a small enough decimal that you might have just assumed that we can round down, but if we're thinking conceptually about this, 0.25 is equal to one fourth. We have one fourth of an extra atom here. It's when we're working with something on the very small scale, one quarter of an atom is actually pretty sizable. So we can't just round this one quarter down. We're gonna have to keep it here for a second. The hydrogens will reduce down nicely though to two and the oxygen will obviously reduce nicely down to one since you're taking 2.221 and dividing it by itself. So what do we do with this carbon? Well, the subscripts are ratios, right there. It, it's, we have two and a quarter carbons for every two hydrogens and one oxygen. And we found this by scaling down. Well, if we can scale our subscripts down, can we not also scale them up? The answer there is yes. Like everything here, the subscripts are all again, ratios. So long as we manipulate one ratio, uh, or so long as we manipulate all ratios in the same way that we manipulate one, it's totally fair game. So if we scaled each of these decimal values up on top down by 2.221, 2 
we can now scale each of the resulting decimals back up in order to remove this fraction. So since 0.25 is equal to a quarter, we're going to multiply each of these subscripts by four. This is going to remove the fraction that is currently present on that carbon, giving us nine carbons for every eight hydrogens for every four oxygens. And this is the empirical formula for the compound that we are working with. All right, so you might ask yourself a question then, which is, well, how would I know that this 0.25 is too large to round down? Like, when is it safe to round versus when do I have to take these decimals into account? And the answer there is, uh, well, rather, how I should say this is to answer your question, I'm just gonna pose another question. Is your decimal clearly a fraction? Are you working with one quarter or are you working with one third or are you working with one half? If your resulting subscript, just like this carbon was a 2.25, if your resulting subscript is a really nice and obvious fractional value, chances are you can't round, you're going to have to scale up in some way. So if our subscript would have been a 0.33, we're gonna have to scale everything up by three. If our subscript is a half in any way, we're gonna have to scale up by two, right? We're gonna have to scale back up in order to remove the fraction. In doing so, our resulting formula does look pretty hefty, right? We have nine carbons, eight hydrogens, four oxygens, but this is the lowest uh, or the smallest, how do I say this? this uh, the lowest whole number reduction. There we go. That's how I want to phrase it. This is the lowest whole number reduction of all of the subscripts without turning anything into a fraction like how we had before. So how you know when to round your value after reducing your subscripts should be really, really close to an integer value, something like on the level of 0.9. If your value though is further away than 0.9 or like 0, 0.00 something, if it's clearly closer to a fractional value, keep that fraction. And then as we did in this example here, scale it back up to remove the decimal.